All right, I think we are ready. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this uh, Media Corp briefing. Um, thank you for taking the time to join us today. Uh, I'm Reyes, and I'll be facilitating today's session. Um, before we dive into today's agenda, I would like to remind everyone that this session is being recorded. And um, I also thought I would share what you can expect from the session. So first of all, I'll start by giving an overview of some of the latest WordPress releases, community updates, and events. And then we'll move on to discuss the new learned WordPress experience. We have some training contributors um, with us today who will share more information about this lunch and address any questions you might have. Um, Catherine, um, Cynthia, and Jonathan, would you like to introduce yourselves? Sure, I guess we'll go in the order you just said. Um, I'm Catherine Presner, and I'm based in Montreal, Canada. And I've been working with WordPress since 2008, first as a WordPress designer developer, and then as a happiness engineer with WordPress.com. And now I am a sponsored contributor working with the training team. And so I've helped with the uh, remake of learn.wordpress.org. And I help do other things in the community, like helping out with a guide program that the training team has to mentor new contributors and a whole bunch of other things uh, involving the training team. So it's great to be here. Thanks, Catherine. Um, Cynthia, did I pronounce your name correctly? Yeah. Perfect. Hi, thanks for having me here. I am a new contributor with the training team. My background is a freelance WordPress developer for the past uh, four years. I've been exclusively working with WordPress. And previous to freelancing, I was actually a C-sharp programmer for a SaaS company. Nice. Thank you for joining us. Um, Jonathan. Hey, everybody. Uh, I'm Jonathan. I'm from Cape Town, South Africa. Uh, it's nice to see some of you for the first time. I've definitely had some communication and conversations with some of you over the past years, but it's nice to actually see some faces that are, are folks that I recognize. Um, and I, like Catherine, I'm a sponsored contributor to the training team. Um, and I work with folks like Cynthia to create uh, all the educational content, the lessons, uh, the online workshops that we that we have on Learn WordPress. Thank you so much, uh, Jonathan. And um, thank you, everyone, again, for joining us. OK, after discussing the new uh, Learn WordPress updates, uh, if time permits, I will also try to share a quick rundown of the latest showcase entries. And finally, we will open the floor for other discussion topics and questions about the Media Core projects. Um, we have uh, Jen as well, who has been helping with the Media Core project. So I'm sure she'll also be helping addressing any questions or discussion topics we may have. Um, as a reminder, um, you are welcome to share any questions during the session in the chat. So when first submitting a question, um, just please remember to indicate indicate the media outlet or channel that you represent so we can have more context. And I think that's pretty much all. Um, do you have any questions so far? All good? Okay. Um, let's dive right into our first agenda topic then. Um, on WordPress releases and community program uh, updates. Um, one second, let me first share Okay, some relevant links in the chat that I'll be, um, one second, that I'll be mentioning for reference. Um, there are a bunch of links, so um, don't worry. Yeah, I'll be just mentioning the different updates, but there you go. So you can have them for reference. All right, um, so WordPress 6.6.1 was released on July 23rd. Uh, this maintaining release featured uh, seven bug fixes in core and nine for the blog editor. 
in episode 84 of the WordPress Briefing Podcast, um, Josefa uh, hayden Chompozy and Meher Bala, 6.6 Release Coordinator, discuss the WordPress 6.6 Release and Meher's journey from contributing to marketing to leading uh, the release. Um, if you haven't uh, give that a listen, I highly recommend it. And numerous media partners covered and helped amplify the 6.6 release. So I just wanted to um, note and express uh, a big thank you for all those contributions. And we are right now in the WordPress 6.7 release cycle with beta one schedule for October 1st. And uh, we should expect an update on the 6.6, uh, sorry, 6.7 release squad uh, very soon. Um, as you might know, Gutenberg 18.9 was released on July 31st and introduced new updates to data views, um, some consistent de design tool support across most more blogs and improve usability when editing and, and applying font site presets, presets in global styles, among other highlights. And if you're interested in learning uh, more about what's been worked on in the Gutenberg plugin, I recommend you check out the next Huawei Hangout, which is scheduled for August uh, 15th. Um, Okay, moving on to WordPress Playground. Um, the team recently announced that it supports offline mode and that it can be installed as a progressive web app. Um, these features allow folks to explore and experiment with WordPress without needing an active internet connection, which make it, makes it easier to develop and test their ideas on the go. So this is a very cool uh, update actually. And lastly, WordPress developers with experience or interest in extending core blogs are encouraged to share their insights in a GitHub discussion on core blog extensibility. You can also find that link in the chat. Um, any questions so far? All good? Okay, let's let's move on then to, um, well, let me check the, okay, yeah, perfect. Okay, moving on to other community news and upcoming events. Uh, the next cohort of the WordPress mentorship program is scheduled for October, November of this year. The call for interest, uh, which closed in mid-July, attracted 54 mentee applications and 30 from prospective mentors. Um, the community team also published an analysis of global trends in WordPress meetups and a working group has been formed to analyze regional trends. Um, the WordCamp US uh, 2024 um, is approaching fast. It's taking place from September 17th to 20th in Portland, Oregon. The organizing team uh, recently reopened the call for volunteers until tomorrow, August 8th and publish the details and location of the social event, uh, just in case you haven't seen those posts. And the schedule uh, will be published in the uh, coming weeks, if I'm not mistaken. But in the meantime, any help amplifying and encouraging people to get tickets will be highly appreciated. And the last item on uh, coming events that I have in my list is the state of the world. As you might know, a state of the world, it's the annual keynote addressed by WordPress leadership and will take place this year on December 16th in Tokyo, Japan. The event will highlight uh, this year's achievements of the open source project and outline, in, outline its future direction and vision. Um, and I just wanted to share that we should get some updates out later this month, so uh, stay tuned. But yeah, I'll keep you all posted on that. Okay, I think that's all on the first agenda items. Um, do you have any questions before we move on to discuss the Learn WordPress experience? Okay, I don't see any questions in the chat. Feel free also to unmute if you. Uh, did you have a date for the um, block extensibility meeting? The, dis you, the you, discussion. Is that the hallway hangout? Or yeah, is that, or is yeah. that a separate event? 
No, the discussion on GitHub is still open. There are no dates. I okay. believe that's yeah, there's a current discussion and it's that's still open for developers to share feedback and insights on that. Yeah. Okay, good. Just want to make sure. Thank you, Jen. All right. I believe there are no further questions. So um, next on our agenda um, is the announcement of the new Learn the WordPress experience, which went live a few days ago. Um, just as a brief introduction uh, for context, since 2020, Learn WordPress has been a hub for consistent, high quality educational resources that users can trust to learn WordPress. And uh, the platform has uh, recently undergone a significant transformation with a new modern interface and the introduction of learning pathways. Um, this improves the overall user experience with a learner's learner-centric approach. And I know um, this has been a collaborative um, project uh, which has involved multiple contributors and, and teams including um, train, uh, training, meta uh, work, marketing, sorry, and design folks. Um, Catherine or Jonathan, would you um, like to explain a little bit more about the learning pathways, um, why they matter and the vision behind the new learn experience? Shall I take that one, Catherine? <laughs> sure. Um, so with, with the sort of official launch of, of, of you know, the Learn WordPress we knew before the relaunch that happened, um, we did a bit of, uh, the training team did a bit of uh, research with our individual learner survey at around about the end of 2022, beginning of 2023. Um, and we, we wanted to find out from learners what was working, what wasn't working, what would they like to see? Um, and the big item that, that we saw a lot, a lot of people were saying was a more structured, more defined approach to learning WordPress. Um, so those of you who will remember uh, Learn WordPress, you know, when it, when it sort of kicked off in 2020, um, there were some courses, there were some tutorials, but it was kind of very random, very scattershot. There was no specific path if you were brand new to WordPress, uh, where to start, where to go from there. Once you've then gotten used to WordPress, what's the next step? Do you want to build with WordPress? Do you want to develop themes? Do you want to develop plugins? Um, and so we realized that this was something that the community wanted. Um, and so we spent about a year or so kind of defining what that might look like. Um, and that's and that's where we came up with this idea of, of structured learning pathways. So the, the learning pathways that we've, we've currently launched with, uh, we've got at the moment, we're focusing on three different user types. Uh, focusing specifically on WordPress users, so those that are brand new to WordPress uh, or getting used to WordPress. Uh, we also want to create content uh, for designers, so those that are building sites with WordPress, designing with WordPress, um, and then also developers. Uh, a big, a big reason why why Cynthia and I are involved is that there is a big uh, uh, ask from the community for high quality developer focused content. Um, so, so we, we we've launched with four learning pathways, uh, two user pathways, two developer pathways. We have a whole bunch more coming uh, that we're working on. Um, and, and that's kind of the history behind all of that um, and how we got there. Catherine, I don't know if you want to chat maybe a little bit about the design um, and, and how we ended up there. Sure. Actually, I'm going to just share my screen. I want to just show what the site looked like before for those who might not remember. Um, this is what it looked like before. So it was... The focus was on tutorials, which were sort of one-off videos about a specific topic, and lesson plans, which were geared to people teaching WordPress to others. And then, as Jonathan said, there were um, some courses, but no real, and then tutorials here. These little graphics did not used to be here. Um, and so this is what it looked like before. And when it was relaunched, this is what it looks like now. So it was... The design was overhauled to better match the rest of the .org site, at least the parts of the .org site that have been revamped and refreshed. So it's a much more coherent look now. And also before it was very text heavy. Um, 
you know, apart from these sort of uh, trapezoids or whatever that shape is called, um, there it was really text heavy. So um, these graphics were created to represent the different user types. So this is different developers and this is for users. And as Jonathan mentioned, there will be learning pathways for designers coming. And also there'll be learning pathways for contributors coming further down the road. And then um, these little thumbnail graphics were created. So the design team created this incredible tool in Figma called the thumbnail generator. And we created a set of instructions and even a video on how to create these thumbnails because we have these hundreds of courses and lessons so courses are composed of multiple lessons. So you'll see here, beginner developer has 59 lessons, beginner user has 24. And each of these courses and lessons needed a little thumbnail graphic to add visual interest to the site and variety and make it a lot more um, interesting to look at than it used to be. So the community actually rallied around and created hundreds of thumbnail graphics um, for all these pieces of content. So you can see now, if you go to see all courses, there are all these little graphics. And this was a community that did these. So we had uh, sessions online. We had sessions. Uh, I did a little session at WordCamp Canada. Uh, we had a, a, a meetup. We had an impromptu contributor hour. So there were all sorts of uh, activities to get people helping to create these graphics and then helping upload them. So I think that's a cool example of how the community really pulled together to make the site look look great. Um, so yeah, that's a little bit about, about the site. And just as Jonathan said, if we go into one of these learning pathway areas, you can see that for now, there are two courses on developing with WordPress, one for beginner developers. And if you click on it, you'll see that it consists of modules, chunks of lessons, and within each module, there are lessons. And many of these lessons were set to be previewable, which means that without even needing a .org account, without even needing to click take this course, you don't even have to be logged in, you can actually see the whole lesson. So the only thing you won't be able to do is take a quiz if there's a quiz with the course. So I think this is really cool because it means people can dive in, appreciate the content and think, oh, hey, you know what? I actually want to sign in, take this course and then create a .org account and then sort of, you know, get uh, enveloped in the community and hopefully participate uh, further. So and the other thing, I don't know, Jonathan, if you want to talk a little about this practice on a demo site or um, <laughs> sure. So that this ties back into uh, what Reyes was saying earlier about you know WordPress Playground and the fact that Playground exists. So there are direct links um, from the course landing page to be able to spin up a WordPress Playground instance. So as you're working through the course, you can have that instance in your browser. So you don't need a local WordPress install. Uh, you can just go through and you can you know test out the things that you're learning. We're also busy working on um, being able to. There's a there's a WordPress Playground block. Um, that we're that we're embedding in the lessons themselves. So for specific lessons, you'll just be able to um, in the lesson itself when you finish the lesson have a little practical running in WordPress Playground that you'll be able to to test your 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 knowledge right then and there. Um, and because it's running on Playground, you can just export that to your local machine. Uh, if you're doing the developer side of things and you're writing code, you can see the code making changes live in that Playground block, and then download that code locally if it's a theme or it's a plugin. Um, so we're busy. We're still busy experimenting with the best ways to use all of that. There's been some um, accessibility uh, issues that we've been fixing in the playground block to get that working. Uh, but we're really hoping to make learn at WordPress at all the place where you come to not only learn WordPress but also practice WordPress uh, and practice what you've learned without need to go anywhere else, without need to install anything else, um, and really make it this interactive, uh, fun experience. You know, we all know that learning is important, but it's often very slow and boring and tedious. And so we're trying to make it as interactive and as fun as we possibly can. Um, the other thing I want to mention, and it's difficult to see this uh, because of the resolution on Catherine's screen, but one of the biggest bugbears that I had about the old site was that we had this very narrow um, content area. I think it was set at like 800 pixels or something from you know back in 2020. Um, now it's a lot wider. So it takes up more of the screen real estate. So if you're on a bigger screen, you, you won't have all these you know white areas on the side. You can see it's kind of stretched on Catherine's screen. So it just means we can present more content to you. So we've really tried to modernize the entire experience and just make it you know, a fun place to be. Nice, it looks very, very exciting. The site actually looks great. So I'm, I'm really excited about it. 
Um, uh, Cynthia, I believe, well, first of all, congrats on receiving the Kim Parcel Memorial Scholarship. Um, I know you have had a key role in uh, developing the content of the Intermediate Theme Developer course, which is uh, one of the um, courses that are already out and available. Would you like to tell us uh, briefly about your experience and how do you believe the developer learning pathways will also benefit uh, developers in the community? I'd love to share my experience. So I am an unsponsored contributor, which means that I would wake up in the morning, do my content creation, and then switch over to doing my day job. So it was it was t very time consuming, but it was a lot of fun. Uh, I fell into the training team quite easily. I do have a uh, background in education as well and uh, computer training. And so this felt natural for me. I was fortunate, however, when I jumped in, um, all that research that Jonathan talked about, that was done for me. So, um, so I have uh, experience in developing curriculum and I know how choosing the topics and the, creating the outline creating that content is very time consuming. So that was all done for me. I actually based all of my lessons on the uh, theme handbook that's available in docs. So that made it, you know, so that I could quickly get into the creative portion, which was creating the script and the um, the video. So then I, I um, edited the video and then uh, I used uh, Camtasia for that. And then I um, created the lessons that were just shown to you. So I would um, go in and add my um, my video and the the uh, text. Uh, so now we get to focus on the fun stuff that Jonathan is talking about, and that's making sure that um, people that are going through can feel that um, they have an opportunity to assess their comprehension. So they can do some hands-on activities and some quizzes. Uh, so go beyond that visual experience and play around either within Playground or um, their local development environment. So uh, I don't see myself leaving the training team anytime soon. There's so much fun work ahead of us. Well, that, that's great to hear. Um, Jonathan, please go ahead. Mm, I just wanted to to add to what Cynthia said there. She, she reminded me about the fact that we are heavily um, sort of at the foundation of our lessons are the documentation. Uh, so almost every lesson that exists in these courses has a link back to some piece of documentation somewhere. Um, and the great thing about this is that as we're busy creating this content, um, if we see documentation that needs a little bit of a tweak or it needs a bit of an update, then we can go and we can, you know, chat to the docs team and we can say, hey, we need to fix this, we need to fix that. Um, it, it got to a point over the course of the last sort of six months to a year that we were working on these learning pathways where the docs team just basically said to me, just fine, just go and fix it. And I got full admin rights uh, to go and make the changes. But it just means we're helping to make the documentation better in the process. Um, we're, we're seeing as we're exploring these things, and this is what was great about having Cynthia on board, yeah, Cynthia is a, is, a, is a much more experienced theme developer than what I am. So she was coming up with, okay, how are we going to teach this? How are we going to teach that? Bouncing ideas off me. And then we would discover, oh, maybe this documentation needs to be moved around. It needs to be changed slightly to make more sense to somebody learning about theme development. Um, so the great thing about, you know, there's that old saying of the only way you really can, can understand something is if you have to teach it, because then you really have to understand it. So in this process, we're learning so much about how you know WordPress works and how you develop with WordPress and helping to bring that information and that learning back to, to, to docs and through other folks in the community. So it's this really cool sort of cycle of improvement, uh, which has been, I think, for Cynthia and myself, really, really rewarding. That's indeed a, a great point. And I believe there's a, an, an open call for contributors. Is that correct? 
uh, for that the intermediate plugin developer learning pathway. Yes. Uh, so so the intermediate sure. plugin developer is essentially the next learning pathway we want to work on. Uh, the way we the way we laid out and and I'm gonna if if you want I can talk about development and development courses for the rest of the time. So stop me if this gets boring. But um, with the with the developer learning pathways, we sort of laid out beginner developer foundational work, and then we thought about okay, the next sort of logical step once you start developing the WordPress is you kind of make a choice between theme or plugin, depending on your use case, your requirements, you know what where your interest lies. So that's why we split it off to intermediate theme and intermediate plugin. So theme is now done because we figured that was the most important one to do first. Plugin is next. Um, and plugin is quite a few more lessons because there's almost quite a, sort of a lot more that you could do with plugins, a lot more interactions and implementations and things like that. Um, and I worked out that based on an average uh, output rate of 2.5 lessons a week, which is roughly what I can do on my own. Uh, if I were to work on this on my own with no other, no other uh, support, it would take me the rest of this year. Um, and that's not cool. So I put out a call for for folks to come and join me. I'm hoping to get the plugin community. We've 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 cross posted to the plugin review team. Um, so anybody who has an interest in developing plugins, who has an interest in teaching others about developing plugins, who can help us research and write scripts, who can help us with voice recordings. Uh, so sometimes we'll do a cool thing where somebody will, will do the research and script writing, and somebody else will record the voice, and then someone else will take the voice and put the video together. Um, or someone will just, you know, do the whole thing. So we've got all of these different opportunities to where folks could come along or just review it, you know, reviewing our scripts, reviewing our final videos, making sure that the content is valid, correct, and showing, you know, the best of what is possible with plugin development. So there is the call for contributors. It's on the training team uh, site. And then there's also in the, if you go to our GitHub uh, repository, there is an issue I've pinned it at the top of the issues list for intermediate plugin developer. Uh, and that's where you can comment and say, yes, I want to get involved and, and we can start connecting there. Awesome. Thanks for sharing. Uh, glad to hear there are plenty of contributing opportunities there. Um, Javier, I saw you shared that question. Would you like to um, unmute and share it yourself? Okay. <laughs> so uh, the first one, the, 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 I I think both uh, were have have been in some topics in some conversations. The first one, I I don't know if now it's um, it's working, but um, is is it showing when when I, if I'm not uh, um, but when when you finish a, a lesson or a tutorial or something. Um, there is like uh, some thing uh, somewhere that shows that you did that uh, tutorial. Is is that showing anywhere? Because I, I know you can see that in Learn WordPress, but it's shown in in I don't know in your profile or or some place. Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I actually had this already open, so I'll just show you. It it is shown on your profile in your activity. Um, okay, in the activity that's, that. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's what it is for now. Um if okay. somebody feels like there should be more to Yeah, this, because like badge more like maybe in in um under the activity tab uh, for example, mm -hmm. there are the photos, the plugins, uh, because the activity disappears when you did <laughs> some things. Yeah. So, so if I could, you, if I could interrupt mean, there, so yeah, that is actually a, that is actually a conversation that we have had okay. with I think the Meta team. Uh, I, I I can't remember if I think it was in GitHub somewhere. I can go and find the GitHub issue okay. once we finish chatting about this. But we have had a conversation. I even I seem to remember even. Uh, using my inspector, uh, inspector tools, developer tools to like quickly hard code one and sort of show it. Uh, and the idea was to have it as its own learn tab, you know, so where okay. it's like plugins uh, oh, okay. and there's a couple of others, I can't remember where they are, but to have one for learn. And then mm -hmm. that would list your completed courses or your lessons okay. that you've taken, whatever. So that is part of the plan. Um, I think it's a conversation that because we don't have control over the profiles, it's a conversation we need yeah. to have with Meta. So it is definitely something we 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 want to do, uh, but our focus was on getting the new site going, and then that's sort of part of the next phase. Uh, so that is that is definitely a conversation that has been had. I'll find that issue or that conversation and see if I can share it 
uh, while we're doing this. Okay, no, it's the, the the main reason is because the activity disappears. <laughs> so so if you want to see if that person did some tutorials or you need like a place to to see that, and that's my second question. Uh, another <laughs> old question about this. Is there any idea to have like an official certification from the community or something? So certifications has been a long conversation. <laughs> um, and I'll even link to a uh, a post from 2022. Um, it's a big topic. And I think there have been a lot of discussions about the pros and cons of having certifications, the difficulty in establishing a certification program. And like Jonathan said, the focus was on getting the site up and running. And then yeah. we can pick up some of these conversations because clearly some folks really want certifications. <laughs> um, and whether whether that's something that'll happen, I'm not sure, because that, like Jonathan said, that's also like a wider <laughs> conversation that has to happen. But it certainly, it comes up a lot. And I think what, now that the site is out, we can pick up some of those conversations and and see where they go. Maybe I'd, I'd like to... A, a sorry, if I could step. just... Yeah, okay, Jonathan, go, go. Sorry, I want, to quickly, I want to quickly add to that, because... This is something that I am very opinionated of. So this is my opinion as Jonathan Bossinger, not the WordPress community, not the company that I work for. But those of you uh, in this room might remember there was a company a number of years ago, last year or sometime, that released their own certification and it was covered on WP Tavern. Um, and I remember some of the comments on that Tavern post. And one of the comments was, and, and this is nothing against that company. I don't, I, I'm not bringing this up to say anything against them, but one of the comments by a community member in that in that tavern post was if I fix all the bugs on their website does that automatically mean I get the certification um, and what that to me what that points to is that as a community we need to first agree what what is required to get that certification now we have some idea of how to get there we're busy creating this content it's a community effort so we're, I think we're all kind of agreeing that having this content is good the community is reviewing it the community is giving us feedback I recently had a piece of feedback on one of my lessons about something that I showed that could have been done a better way and I'm busy recording an update for that. Um, so once we have that foundation, uh, once we have those courses out there that the community agrees on these courses are good, then I think we can have that conversation about certifications because then the community agrees this content is good. The process of going through this content, learning this content, doing the practical exa examples, exams, whatever we have together, means that the person who's completed this content knows what they're talking about, then we can have certifications, uh, I feel. Um, and so I feel like this work that we're doing now is laying the foundation of that. And as Catherine shared, we, we've had this discussion as a training team many, many, many times. And this, this project, this process of creating these learning pathways is very much part of it. But we're, as a community, I don't think we're ready yet to say this content. I could tell you that this content is right because I created it. But you know, somebody else might say, no, what you've done here is wrong. We need to tweak this. We need to tweak that. So there needs to be a little bit of time for the community. And I would love, and I'm going to make this open call, seeing as I've got the media call here, every single de WordPress developer out there, come and take the course. Come and tell me what I'm doing wrong so we can make it better, so we can make it right, so that when anybody takes it, we all know, we all agree that this is the best content for these people to learn from. Excuse me. And then we can certify. <clears throat> Okay. Thanks, Javier, for asking. Uh, I I think conversations around certifications can go for. Yeah. <laughs> like I know, time. I know. It's a big topic, yeah. <laughs> I and I, I know there are some known challenges as well. Um, uh, Jonathan, I, I know uh, you raised your hand again, or. Oh, okay. I, I don't know if you wanted to um, share something else. Um, I just wanted to share or ask you also, where can people learn more about um, Learn WordPress and the Learning Pathways Project? Um, Catherine, maybe you can share. Sure, well, I think you might've shared it in the chat before, but there is um, a post, if you're talking about uh, the new site and Learning Pathways on the new site, um, I wrote an introductory post here, but is that what you meant or did you mean something else? 
Yeah, let me share um, some of those links. And I believe you hosted a, an online workshop yesterday and you are yes. uh, hosting another one tomorrow. Is that correct? Yes, yes, exactly. So uh, we had one yesterday. Jonathan and I hosted a workshop about the new site. We recorded it. It's up on um, wordpress.tv. I will grab the link. And then we're having another one tomorrow. So that's a tomorrow will be with Wes Theron, who's another content creator. And yeah, we walk through the new site live. Oh, thank you for grabbing the link. Yeah. And here's the recording of yesterday's. And yeah, it's a tour of the new site in greater depth than we've done here, let's say. And we also had the certifications question yesterday. So obviously that's going to keep coming up, but it's good. It's good for us to, to talk about it and, and, uh, and get the conversation going again. So yeah, that would be another place to uh, check out. Definitely. Um, I know Ben also gave a talk at WordCamp Europe uh, for those folks interested in getting our, a little more background about the, the Learn WordPress platform as well. I'm going to share the link in the chat as well. And uh, there was an episode uh, in the WordPress briefing podcast as well with Wes, I believe, um, touching on the learning pathways. So all of those are great resources um, to get some more context. Okay. Um, and I think, um, I don't know, Fox, if you want to share anything else about uh, the new learned WordPress uh, lunch can, any other resources i can take this question from uh oh Javier, if you want. yeah sure yeah so very good question about multilingual capability um i will share my screen and show you what we have now so we have had volunteers translating over time so not just for the launch but over time some of the lessons some of the courses and so you can toggle the language to see what's available we need more folks to help translate. And also we need a better multilingual solution. So right now, if you click on, you know, Italiano, you'll see the courses in Italian. These are some community courses, um, but this isn't a true multilingual solution, obviously. Uh, this is a sort of a, what could be done at the time. However, going forward, we want a better multilingual solution. And so we are testing um, a multilingual plugin which is Translate Press. Now, the meta team ran into some technical issues with Translate Press. There were some uh, issues with that plugin um, using it at scale like this. There were some performance issues. The Translate Press team said they would fix them. And so now, again, now that the site is launched and we've got the base up and running, uh, we're picking that up again. And um, hopefully we'll be able to implement that and have a full multilingual solution because the way of copying content right now is not ideal. It's a cumbersome process and it's, it's not ideal as ever, anyone who's ever built a multilingual site knows it's you, you, you need, you need a, a good system. And so, um, translate press tested well, it's just that there are some scalability issues with it. So stay tuned. <laughs> Thanks, Catherine, for answering. Um, I want to be sorry, mindful of. Just... Oh yes, yeah. Very quickly, I want to just yeah. also add, we do have a process in place to start translating the content, even though the plugin is not working. So again, call for contributors. If you speak a different language to English, I speak Afrikaans, which is useless to the rest of the world. Um, so I can't translate anything. But if you speak another language and you can translate the content, that would be amazing because I would love to see all of our content translated for everyone. So. If you, if you want to translate, you can start. And then once we get the solution in place, then we can implement it. OK. Thank you. OK, I was uh, saying that um, I want to also be mindful of people's time. Um, so if there are no further questions, um, I believe we can move on to the um, next agenda item. I I'm also curious. Um, because we are approaching the hour. Um, I'm also curious uh, to know if you folks prefer or want to hear about the showcase entries or do you prefer to jump directly into the open floor? I see Ray, you are, <laughs> did I pronounce it correctly as well, Ray? 
Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, maybe then I can share. Oh, question. How many? Oh, uh, Ray, you can go ahead as, as well at, at a mute. Yeah. Hi, everyone. I was wondering how many people are working on creating, how many contributors are working on creating content for Learn WordPress? Is it a small team? Is it lots of people? I mean, because there's a lot of content to create, you know, with one course having 59 lessons and that's very time consuming. So I'm just interested in the, in the, the workload as well. Mm, Catherine, do you feel like I'll see that one? <laughs> should I, should I yeah, take Cynthia? Maybe I'm, even... <laughs> I'm trying to look up the stat for I can, July. I can talk, but I don't want it to be the me show. <laughs> well, go ahead and talk. In the meantime, I'm looking up the number for July specifically. So sure. So what I what I do know is that there, there are a small number of what we're calling content creators. So Catherine, sorry, Cynthia is a content creator. I don't know why my hand is up. Maybe Sue was picking up my hand, but I didn't physically do it. Um, Cynthia is a content creator. I'm a content creator. Wes is a content creator. Now, what we mean by that is somebody who takes a lesson idea, a description with an objective, sometimes not even an objective, maybe some links, and does the whole thing start to finish. <clears throat> so at the moment, there's about four or five of us that are full up, you know, we create the whole thing start to finish. Um, then there are a number of folks who are just creating the video part. So we, uh, somebody, I can't remember who met with some folks from, I think it's Hostinger. They've got some video editors. Um, they're not great at the research and script writing part, but they're, they're great at taking a, a voice recording and a script and then putting some video together. So we have two team members from Hostinger that are contributing a number of hours per week towards that. Um, we have a, a big pool of reviewers. Uh, so we have a number of reviewers in the team. I would say easily 15 reviewers that, that review the content quite regularly. Um, and then we also have a number of uh, script writers. So the, again, it's, it's, a small, it's a small number. There's about three or four of those. They just do research and script writing. Um, and I want to I wanna highlight Ronnie Shani uh, there. She's done some amazing work with us. Um, and I'm sure other I see other people putting thumbs up. Ronnie's all over the place. She does amazing things. But she's helped with a lot of research and script writing, especially for the developer-focused things. She's not comfortable having her voice recorded or doing the video, but she's very good at doing that. Um, so I would say on the whole, the whole team, if we, if we include the reviewers, is probably 20 to 25. That excludes anybody translating content. That's just creating the original English content. Uh, but then that's broken down by different roles and what, what folks are capable of doing. Um, you know, obviously creating content requires you to be comfortable recording your voice, as you can hear, I'm very comfortable doing that, um, comfortable with a video editing tool, putting these things together. Uh, and that's why we've tried to um, sort of open up the sausage factory and make it easy to break these tasks up a little bit so that we can include other contributors. So, so that's why in my call for contributors post, I've looked, I'm, I'm saying if you are interested in any of those sort of five areas, please come and join us because, you know, the more the merrier. Thanks, Jonathan. And in the meantime, I, I popped the stat in the chat, but in July, we had six content creators. That's folks creating videos, scripts, voiceovers, editing, and all that, all that types of work. And then we had three people who created localized content. Um, so that was in two different languages. That gives you some idea. And I don't think that was out of the ordinary. And, you know, it's not an average, but that's an, a sample month. Thank you. Thank you both for answering that. Um, okay, any, um, any other lingering questions? Okay, it feels, um, or it looks like we uh, can move on to the next item. Uh, again, I don't know, um, how do you feel about going quickly through some of the latest showcase entry entries is that okay for everyone um yeah okay okay i guess these sessions always um take longer than than expected a lot of things to <laughs> talk about and discuss <laughs> okay um so again let me share some links for reference uh in the chat i'll i'll try to um okay uh, I'll try to cover these um, very quickly. Um, one of the first entries I shared is uh, Freethink. 
Uh, Freethink is a digital media company dedicated to uh, sharing stories of people and ground, ground uh, break ticket, break breaking uh, technologies. Um, they have a modern website design that draws visitors into a dynamic mix of content, including including long for uh, reading pieces and videos. Um, and they leverage to WordPress scalability and design is built on WordPress, WordPress VIP. Um, it's really a really cool site. So, um, and a large publication. So uh, there's uh, the link to the showcase. And the next on the list is Spotify's official newsroom uh, for the record, which leans on WordPress publishing capabilities and the flexibility of custom blogs. Um, they deliver a wide range of content about the company, its technology and um, cultural and musical trends. And oh, the Spotify entry, we don't know, or at least I don't have any other information about who designed the site. But if you are inter interested, um, I can try to, yeah, just uh, learn a little bit more about this entry and try to figure out if or or see if we can, um, yeah, learn more about the designer who's behind that site. Yeah, like the designer. Okay. Um, I was reading some of the uh, chat messages. Um, perfect. Uh, and next on the list, we have Disney um, General Entertainment Press. Uh, this site focuses on Disney's uh, television brands and is built to um, communicate update, updates across uh, its creative properties. Um, Using WordPress, a DGE press team um, streamlined the editorial process, content distribution, and updates for 8,000 press members. Um, you can learn more about these and other enterprise uh, success stories in the Enterprise WordPress Showcase shared by the Scale Consortium Group. I know this is a brand this group uh, works with. Um, so yeah, I highly recommend um, checking that um, a scale consortium link if you want to read about some more other cool success stories. And other entries include uh, Bibe, a French design agency, um, Digitalist, a digital marketing agency from Austria, and Studio NA Blue, a design and production studio headquartered in Africa. Um, um, they are all great examples of modern sites that leverage WordPress flexibility to create um, some unique and branded experiences. Um, so all of these are pretty cool sites and um, those are links in case you want to uh, check those out. If you want any more, any other information about them, feel free to reach out and I can try to learn or yeah, learn a little bit more about who um, are the designers behind them. Um, I know a few folks from those sites, uh, others we don't know how, uh, uh, so many information, so much information, but yeah. Um, and finally, I would just like to remind everyone that the State of uh, Enterprise WordPress 2024 survey is now open and looking for feedback from enterprise organizations. So if uh, you know any enterprise uh, brands using WordPress, please encourage them to provide the input to help advance the enterprise WordPress space. Um, I think um, that's all. Um, question, Javier, is there a way to filter by country in the showcase page, you mean? Um, I don't know if, if it's, there's actually a... I, I, I cannot find, if there is a way, I cannot find that. I, I, I see that there is like a place where it says country, whatever, but there is no filter for, or I cannot find the filter, but... Yeah, that's interesting. Um, I don't know right now if there's a maybe we we need to open a filter. <laughs> I don't think there's a current filter by country. No, yeah, that, that we, would be interesting. So some time ago, we we talked in the Spanish community to have like some directory for for meetups or whatever focus on Spain, and it should be interesting to have one place where you can put Spain and see everything there, but I cannot find that. So 
I, yeah. I will try to open a, a ticket and issue somewhere. I don't know where where the showcase is now, but it's it's in some repo in in this. Yeah, I believe I, there's I will a, find some. a repo for the WordPress.org website. So yeah, okay. I can uh, follow up with you on that if I if I find the right uh, repo okay. where you can share your suggestion. Yeah, but I agree that that that's interesting. Yeah. Okay, um, if uh, there are no more questions on that, I believe uh, we can move on to a little bit on discussion. I guess there's not a lot of time. I mean, uh, I'm okay with going for a little bit over an hour, but again, I just want to be mindful of everyone's time. So um, let's open the floor for any other topics about the Media Core project. Uh, I noted some potential conversations that I had in mind, but I would like to first hear if you have any specific questions or topics that you would like to discuss. If so, please feel free to unmute or share them in chat. It's quiet here. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Ray, uh, any updates on the progress of the Media Core experiment? Um, what do you mean, like progress or any update on the progress? I would love if you could elaborate a little bit more on that to ensure I understand it correctly. Yeah, I just mean, um, I guess what what's the I guess general sentiment around how it's how it's going I guess for, for your team as well and from leadership um and is there a timeline for you know looking back at the progress and, and measuring it mm. and deciding on whether it's been successful or not yeah that's a great question so I think um I think progress, well, I think we are just starting I mean maybe it feels like ages since we announced like the first idea uh, but we are really starting uh the project uh i the latest um like feedback form that we share i believe in general i mean i think feedback was positive of course i think there's room to um address or like keep improving based on media fox like feedback and but I feel right now the general sentiment is positive and there's a lot of I think we are still learning as we go like there are no like set processes yet I think we are just learning um, and the experimental project I know there are a few folks who maybe don't like to call this experiment but I think it's actually a kind of it's an experiment and the um, timeline we set for or to just uh, see if this could be successful as December. So I think by the end of the year, we'll be able to maybe look back at the past six months and, you know, like just um, evaluate some of the feedback, some of the insights received and uh, just see, you know, how this uh, has been going, uh, what's the feedback received uh, and we can recommend or suggest any direction or another one so yeah i don't know if uh, does this answer your question yeah i also um in the meantime i don't know in case you are also thinking about any other questions i also wanted to chat touch a little bit on the media core and the uniting WordPress YouTube uh, YouTubers efforts, because um, I don't know uh, if Fox have uh, all the context at, at background. So, um, but on July third, and uh, host Anne McCarthy hosted a call with some WordPress YouTubers to get to know each other and chat about uh, pain points, content planning, and other ways to stay in touch. And if I'm not if I'm not mistaken, um, she'll be hosting another call later this month. So um, I feel there has been some confusion maybe around like Media Core and Ants efforts. Um, so I thought I would try to help clarify those initiatives and and 
um, to help manage expectations and any potential confusion. So um, for those who are not or who haven't heard about Anne's efforts, I believe they try to or they aim to provide accurate and like relevant product information, also leveraging actually the, the WordPress Media Core project. And, but they also aim, uh, aim to help create a feedback loop where YouTubers, creators can share their feedback and insights uh, from the audiences back into the project. And lastly, I think um, Anne is also aiming to build a community where these creators can exchange t uh, tips, tricks, or and any other best practices to support each other. So I think um, in comparison to the Media Core, or at least regarding the Media Core project, what we aim is to cover a broad range of WordPress updates and briefings, so not just limited to uh, product releases or technical development uh, topics. Um, and I guess we, we also expect like media partners to regularly attend or watch briefings and share feedback on uh, to help shape actually like the upcoming briefings and the project implementation. So I see or at least from my perspective, I see that Anne's efforts might be more suitable for YouTubers or content creators who want to maybe um, share product feedback or stay closely informed about core Gutenberg and other related discussions. Um, but again, I, I, this is not, by the way, I mean, these efforts are also compatible. It doesn't mean that you have to be uh, in one or the other one. Um, but it's just that I thought, I don't know, sharing some of these contexts would help especially clarify, um, I don't know, um, these efforts. Um, so hopefully this helps ab avoid um, some confusion. But yeah, that's my perspective. Any other? Questions, thoughts? Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead, Ray. Couldn't find the, uh, the hand raising icon, so I'll just <laughs> I'll just ask it. So um, that it's interesting that you talk about that because that was actually going to be one of my next questions. Um, obviously, there's been some criticism from YouTubers in recent weeks. Um, about um, WordPress, Gutenberg, um, the release of Word, uh, WordPress 6.6. Um, I guess how is how is leadership handling that? Is that something that Anne is taking care of? Is that something that, like, I guess what what is the feedback from leadership around that kind of criticism that's happening? I don't have any feedback from project leadership. I honestly feel that it's um, really hard. I mean, uh, to just keep track of everything that it shared out there. Like, I, I think um, even I know contributors like Anne and other core contributors, I know they try to stay um, uh, like updated on, you know, like feedback shared out there. But I think it's really, really hard uh, to just keep track of all the feedback and thoughts, opinions that are shared out there like daily. So I'm not, you know, like I, I don't even know if sometimes, you know, like or some of those uh, videos sometimes are even, uh, I mean, if project leadership knows some or knows about those videos or feedback. I know, you know, like um, there are, uh, for example, one of the, things that Anne also hopes with this initiative is um, to actually try to improve the feedback loop because right now I think it's it's kind of hard to for everyone to know what's being shared because there are also many different places to share input and or like future requests suggestions it's all kind of you know like distribute across many different places so I think it's really hard to just keep track of everything that it's shared out there um so i think that's also i mean the idea uh regarding like improving the feedback loop but yeah but i can share like any i i don't know any thoughts or 
input like from project leadership on that. Okay. I know um we I mean I I do have more topics that I would like to discuss but I know we um we're um, I see we're a little over an hour already so um yeah I think we can wrap up our discussion for today if there are no other thoughts questions and um I think we covered a lot of ground and uh, we can keep conversations going, Slack, GitHub, uh, for any questions or topics that we would like to further discuss. And of course, if there's interest, we can always consider scheduling um, a discussion call, not, not just a briefing, but I mean like a, more of a discussion call. So yeah, all right. So yeah, I guess we can officially wrap this up. Um, thank you all for your contributions and for sharing your thoughts. And thank you, Catherine, uh, Cynthia, and Jonathan for sharing your insights about the new Learn uh, WordPress experience with us. Um, as a reminder, uh, the recap and recording of this session will be will be shared on the MediaCore blog in the following days, and the video will be also uploaded to the WordPress YouTube channel. Um, if you have any further questions or need any ad additional information, please feel free to reach out on Slack. Um, thank you, everyone, and have a great uh, day, afternoon day <laughs> and yeah thank you thank you all again for your time thank you thank you everybody guys. yeah <laughs> thanks